happy and very glad to host you today. And we want to warmly welcome you to today's session, to today's uh, third edition of the Accra Technical University's Library Mentorship Program, which is being hosted under the theme, Mentoring and Supporting Our Next Generation of Knowledge Professionals. We really want to appreciate all of you for joining our session today. Members of the Accra Technical University Management, Vice Chancellor, Pro Vice Chancellor, and Key Officers, Deans, Directors, and HODs, our highly distinguished panelists, faculty members, and students, and stakeholders from various African higher education institutions and industry who have connected today, our invited guests, distinguished participants, friends from the media, ladies and gentlemen, all protocol observed. March 8th, which is set aside internationally to celebrate the International Women's Day, should indeed be a key day on the calendar of every organization that prioritizes the empowerment of women and recognizes their contribution to the advancement of society. I therefore want to acknowledge the Accra Technical University and its library unit specifically for this important event and for this important mentorship program, which is being hosted on the International Women's Day. I think the date is actually a very good one uh, and we want to acknowledge them and appreciate them for, for this event. An important forum such as this one is really providing all of us the opportunity to review past progress of women's development in the African higher education space while looking ahead to put in place measures which will ensure the effective functioning and contribution of women to the development of Africa as a continent. Today, both men and women are being presented with this unique opportunity to come together, to network, and to organize ourselves to martial efforts to strengthen women's rights and their participation in social, in economic, and political development and transformation. Indeed, empowering African girls and women is central to Africa's future. And to achieve the continent's development ambitions, Africa must harness the skills, energy, and creativity of all its citizens, enabling both women and men to reach their full potential. Uh, the more we create the systems and environments which enable women to participate fully in their economy and society, the more they will contribute to Africa's growth and prosperity. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal 5 targets the achievement of gender equality and empowerment of all women and girls. Our theme today is mentoring and supporting our next generation of knowledge professionals. And this is very apt and very timely because it is about time that all of us as stakeholders put in extra efforts to ensure that the next generation is ready for the task ahead of them. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce my co-moderator for this session. My name is Dr. Nkuma Kwagoji, and I work at the Association of African Universities. I'd like to invite my co-moderator to also introduce herself, and then we'll be taking you through the program and uh, be moderating the session. Over to you. Thank you very much, Kizuka. Uh, you're welcome to all of you, and we are pleased to have you for today's event. My name is Anna. Yeah, Thank you very much. I think uh, we can actually uh, introduce ourselves uh, where we are connecting from our institution. We can use the chat box to sort of start the networking session. I think that's one of the key goals of this session. So let's make use of it. Let's know who is here. And we want to appreciate all of you for joining us uh, once again. Uh, without wasting much time, I think I would like to invite the Pro Vice Chancellor in the person of Professor Amevi Akakovi to give his initial comments and welcome address. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. You are welcome to the third edition of the Accra Technical University Libraries Mentorship Program. I want to take this opportunity as the Pro Vice Chancellor of the University to thank both our local and international participants for making time to join us on this program today. Sure. You are definitely at the right place. Today for me marks 
Our third edition of the mentorship program, as I said earlier, and today we are coming with the team mentoring and supporting our next generation of knowledge professionals. And I am glad that our speakers for the event today are all female. <laughs> and they are coming from all over the world, from great institutions, and we have people from Ghana, Nigeria, and South Africa. I did a Let me talk a little about mentorship. You know, there are so many definitions of mentorship we can have in the dictionary, but let me say that, to me, mentorship provides undeserved or unqualified experience, you know, knowledge or skill transfer to young professionals. This uh, this actually help professionals or young professionals achieve their long term career goals or their professional goals. If I may say, the question you want to ask yourself is whether mentorship is required or not. But I think that looking at the current situation of the youth deviating for lack of mentorship or doing things a bit different from how it used to be done in the past. You, you are, are completely missing the leadership role today. And even in, in formal education, you realize that um, people undertake degree program, master's program, but it still does not build a human being to the completion, to be able to deliver, you know, effectively and efficiently as required on the job market. But I think that mentorship provides an opportunity to complement formal education in the first place. And also to give a right well, and better direction to these uh, youths deviating and problem we are all facing today in this uh, 21st centuries. So it has become very important to look at mentorship program. Somebody described this in a quote in the Bible that this is uh, the biblical sheep with no shepherd. That is the lack of vision, focus, determination, and hard work uh, is what characterize this youth we have now yet they expect great benefit they want speedy jump in rank they want to be promoted they have they want easy money and so many many different opportunities that do not come with the effort they put in so the question we ask ourselves is that who is to be blamed if the youth is behaving this way and there's no proper mentorship established is it the sheep in quote of today who are unwilling to submit themselves to the shepherd for mentorship? Or is it because the shepherd themselves have become too busy and too occupied and not ready to provide this guidance and this leadership to lead their young professional on the right itinerary? That is very welcome news that we have great panelists, great experienced panelists who speak on this matter today. There are people of repute, as I mentioned earlier, from Ghana, South Africa, and Nigeria, and they are willing to take up their busy time from their busy schedules to share with young professionals their experience and help with successful career. I am very confident that the library has assembled the best team for this mentorship program, and I believe that we shall tap the best from it. So let's give them our full attention and learn very much from their experiences today. I would like to take advantage finally to extend warm regards and congratulatory messages to the ATU library led by Dr. Florence Plucky for their numerous programs and highly educated programs that come to complement and support you know, the academic programs we run here at Accra Technical University. You know, at Accra Technical University, we are determined to be the best. Our vision is to be the topmost university with strong regional influence. And I think some of these programs actually contribute towards the attainment of this vision. And for that matter, I would like to say a big thank you again to the library. Kindly enjoy the speeches for the rest of the program. And uh, let me say, long live the ATU library, long live ATU. Thank you all for attending this program and have a wonderful program. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, distinguished pro vice chancellor. I think uh, your message is very well loaded in that you are calling the mentors to be good shepherds who are ready to provide guidance and lead. I also heard you say that mentorship is really important because it provides unqualified experience and skill prospects to young professionals. We really want to appreciate you. We also want to appreciate Dr. Flores Blocky 
for her leadership in putting this program together. I think she's really demonstrated excellent skills in leading us and in ensuring that you know uh, uh, high level mentors are being put together so that they can also share their skills with the younger ones so that we try to change the face of things. All the things we complain about are not working well. I think mentorship really provides a way for us to rectify and to make such changes. We want to appreciate all of you. Uh, next on the program is the introduction of our high-level panelists. The power team that the uh, uh, provinces spoke about, uh, a, a team composed of all women. And I think at this point, we'd like to introduce them and we'll go through their profile. So their profiles will be coming up shortly. The technical team can support. Uh, first on the list, just a second so that the technical team can help us share their, their profiles. Okay, well, while we wait, maybe I'll just go through and begin by reading. Uh, first on the list is Professor Chinwe Veronica Anunobi, and she is the National Librarian and Chief Executive Officer for the National Library of Nigeria. She was the University Library, Federal University of Technology, Oweri in Nigeria, and a professor of library and information science. She is a member of the ranking team on the National University's Commission's Open Educational Resources. And she started her career as LIS practitioner at the Federal University of Technology, Oweri in Nigeria, where she pioneered ICT unit establishment, electronic thesis and dissertation, and the automation of the university library, as well as establishment of digital library at Nambi as University, Oka in Nigeria. Of Chinri has altered, I think uh, the technical team are coming up soon. Yeah, we, we have it now. Of Chinri has altered over 100 articles and conference presentations uh, and has also made several presentations at conferences. She loves to train and mentor burden professionals and is interested in ICT in education and library and information science. A passion for knowledge management propelled her to define the eight point agenda for the transformation of the National Library of Nigeria on assumption of duty. Some of these agenda which she has implemented include uh, the development and deployment of National Repository of Nigeria, the development and National Virtual Library, and hosting of the National Library Online Public Access Catalog, among several others. Uh, we are indeed very happy to have Prof join us. And I think from the profile, we can see she's a distinguished academic, and there's a lot we look forward to hearing from her in today's session. Next uh, panelist is in the person of Prof. Kule Mbabu Tata, and Prof. Mbabu Tata is one of the most distinguished librarians in Africa. A current position, which he has held since 2006, is Executive Director, Library Service, Services at the University of South Africa, UNISA, which is South Africa's premier distance learning university. Previously, she spent five years as university librarian at the University of Zimbabwe, where against the backdrop of a collapsing economy, she managed to build up a state-of-the-art digital library in addition to her, her role at uh, UNISA. Uh, Prof. Tata is active in the International Federation of Library Associations and Institutions, IFLIA, uh, previously chair of the Africa Section Standing Committee. She's currently chair uh, of IFLIA Division 5, Regional Activities, and member of the Governing Board. She also has a whole string of committee affiliations, including the Library Network of Association of Commonwealth Libraries, the e Knowledge Society for Women in Southern Africa, the Gender in Africa Information Network, and the Access to Learning Award of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. We are indeed highly privileged to have you here, ma'am. Uh, next on our list is uh, Dr. Helena Asamoa Hassan. Uh, do we have a profile as well? Yes, yes, we do. Uh, Dr. Hassan, Dr. Samoa Hassan is the present executive director of African Library and Information Association and Institutions. She is the board chair for the Ghana Library Authority and the secretary general of African Regional Memory of the World Committee. 
She is the immediate past university librarian of the Kwame Nkuma University of Science and Technology, KNUSD, which is based here in Ghana, and the president of the Ghana Library Association from 2002 to 2006, and the first president of the African Library and Information Associations and Institutions. She served as the chairperson of the International Advisory Committee for UNESCO's Memory of the World Program from 2013 to 2015 and uh, 15. She was a member of the IFLA governing board from 2010 to 2012 and the chairperson of the management committee of the Consortium of Academic and Research Libraries in Ghana, which is Kali, as well as a founding member from March 2004 to 2013. Uh, I think we have a lot of high profile and distinguished women with us in this room today, and we are indeed highly blessed. And I think uh, the session promises to be a very insightful and ex uh, an exciting one as well. And then finally, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, our final panelist is Mrs. Nina Chachu, who worked in various libraries in Ghana and Nigeria for over 40 years. This is rich experience that we'll be hearing from today, including institutions such as Kianji Lake Research Institute in Nigeria and British Council Ghana, then Ghana Library Board, and currently she's the head librarian at Ashesi University. She's an active member of the Ghana Library Association in Cali, where she has been on the management committee since 2013. She is also an avid reader and currently a member of two book groups. Mrs. Nina Tachu has worked in various libraries in Ghana, like I mentioned, for over 40 years. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished academics and distinguished librarians who have joined us today, uh, this is the profile of those who would really be the panel for our session today. I think you would agree with me. We are really blessed to have all of them. And uh, maybe if our uh, guests are connected, we we'll just want to see them wave or just say hello to us so that we can really dive straight into the discussions. And we have the honor of just seeing a distinguished panelist. Hello, good afternoon, all of us from Africa. This is Chinwe Amine. Okay. We thank you so much for joining us. It appears you are in a flight, but you still make time to join us. We are so blessed and so honored to have you. Yes, and yes, I'm in a flight. So. <laughs> oh, great. So, so would you prefer we engage you quickly or you still have time to stay with us for the please, entire please, please, one and a half session? Okay? Please, can you engage me immediately? Please, because please, in the next 20 yeah, minutes, I'll fly to the airborne. Okay, that's fine. So, so we will do that. Uh, okay, uh, I, I see Madam Nina also connected. Can we hear from here as well? Hello, Madam Nina. So, okay, can I go first? Yes, please. Yeah, yes, uh, please. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm Nina Chachu. I'm a head librarian here at Ashesi University. And as I said, I've had um, all my experience as a librarian has been here in West Africa, in Nigeria first, and then more recently, but not so recently, uh, in Ghana. So I'm very honored to be asked to be present today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Can we have Prof. Tata, please? Prof. Mbabo Tata. Hi, my name is Bushi Mbambotata, and thank you very much uh, for, for inviting me. Um, I, I go by the title uh, Bushi. <laughs> I'm not professor, I'm Dr. Mbambotata. Uh, but I really thank you for a warm introduction. Um, I, I, uh, just to say that, you know, sometimes our profiles take a while to catch up, but I am now at the National University of Lesotho. Uh, where I'm serving as university librarian after being stationed at UNISA uh, as well as at AFLIA. And I'm now at the National University of Lesotho uh, in the mountains of the Lesotho Kingdom. I'm delighted to be here and thank you very much for inviting me. 
And, and thank you very much. We are also very pleased and very glad to have you here. And then maybe finally, I uh, would we'll also hear from uh, Dr. Asamoa Hassan. Yes, please. I think that we want to hear you. Good well. morning, everyone. Um, I'm really excited to be here to share a few words. And I believe that uh, at the end of the day, we will all be happy that we made time to attend this program. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I see uh, Prof. is here with us. We are very happy to have you here, sir. We appreciate your time. Yes, thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> is there anything you would want to say to us uh, before we dive in? But we, we enjoyed your message. Yes. I'm just happy to be here, having great university librarians sharing their experience with us. Today is already Women's International Day, and we are going to listen to great speakers. So I wouldn't say much. I would rather listen. Thank you very much. I mean, listening more. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. Uh, I think since um, Madam Veronica is in the flight, maybe we can start with her in terms of the engagement session, we really want to uh, have a bit of insight into your experiences. How has it been uh, being a woman in the library space? And what can we, what, what can we learn, you know, as the younger ones from your experiences? Are there some really key uh, high points that you would want to share with us? Just walk us through a bit about your journey and let us know how different the journey has been for you as a woman and how you think it, it, uh, what lessons we can learn from it as we all try to navigate the, the journey of trying to climb to the topmost ladder in our various institutions. So we'll Thank you so very much. Can you hear me? Can yes, you please, hear me? Uh, yes, okay, please, we thank can. Thank you so very much for the opportunity to speak to younger uh, Africans, library information professionals. Um, I must tell you that um, I want to believe that uh, being a woman made it possible for me to succeed as an LIS professional and i the national librarian I am. Um, you see, we have there's some characteristics that distinguish us from men. First and foremost, uh, you as a man there, it's not the person. You are a, as a woman there, is empathic. You are as a woman there, is caring. And then from the home uh, part, from the home, uh, from the home front, you are as a woman there, is everything. You are everything in the home. And when you transcribe that characteristic or the work we do at home, because from the from adolescence, even from the toddler age, a woman, a girl, is expected to be different in attitude and approach to things. Uh, often, many of the domestic responsibilities are also always uh, given to the young girl and then giving her the authority to care for even uh, siblings. And then if you, if you invite this character and you move it to the, to the field of librarianship, which is actually getting you on the spot to render services. You see that empathy. Some, some it, it, it appears it's not so uh, audible. I don't know if I'm the only one having that challenge. What but I it? understand what you are constrained to. What so. is the challenge? What is the challenge you are having? Let me understand. Is it noise? No, no. no. We, okay, please, you okay. can proceed. Okay, so um, I wouldn't know where you got to uh, disengage with me, but I'm trying to have given you the characteristics in human as which I feel that I have, even though I didn't progress from the field of librarianship. I, I entered the field of librarianship as a young scientist, but I saw some passion and characteristics in librarians, librarians and professionals who were actually serving us in the undergraduate phase. And I said, 
these characters they have they care so much for us they try to give us all the resources we want with a lot of uh, care and sweetness and joy and passion and i say no i know i read biology which is science but when i was asked hello can you hear me when i was asked can you hear me are you with me we are please we are following yes. so when i was asked uh, when i was asked what profession I will want to engage in the university. I quickly say that, hey, like, them, like I want to be a librarian because outside librarianship, I like, saw so that kind of hustle and that kind of law and caring in the young uh, bankers. So I said, I want to be a librarian so that I can, I can trust life. And uh, but being a young librarian, I had gotten married before I became a librarian because I graduated. So it was a kind of uh, Double responsibility. But what helped me out was that women naturally are more effective. So that I'm doing my work effectively with passion in the office. I am also thinking of the whole front. I grew up with my children. So I was thinking of how to handle the children, how to do the domain. So, you know, we are all, we are bossa, we are disciplinarian, we are everything in the home. And if anything goes wrong in the home, it is actually the, the woman that is responsible. So, and even the cooking, and even the upbringing to make sure that the children do not sweat. So, I was balancing up, and it was, I must tell you, I had a wonderful and a wonderful experience growing up as a librarian and as a mother, as a wife. I don't know how to make sense. Uh, we heard you, uh, mainly you were highlighting the importance of balancing the roles. You highlighted the various roles that women have to play in society and even in the home, which makes our journey a little bit more um, demanding, you know, a little bit more difficult uh, as compared to maybe our male counterparts. But you also highlighted the need for us to be proactive and be able to balance our roles. Then I think you also made mention of the characteristics of uh, women, uh, uh, and you also expounded on some of our rules. I mean, the cooking, the upbringing, and and all the other extra rules that we play. I think we thank you very much for 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 the input. At this time, I would like to hand over to my co-moderator so that she continues from here. Over to you, Mama. Thank you, Peter. So at this point, we move on to um, Okay, um, I'm happy to start if if you if you want me to. Yes, please. You can go ahead. Okay. Um, all right. I mean, I ended up as a librarian kind of by accident. Um, I had a choice of doing a postgraduate course in either education or librarianship and I decided um confronted with this choice I would be I would do the one in librarianship and I have to admit it was like love at first sight um I knew that from the first day that I started my course at the University of Ibadan uh and that was in the se mid 70s I know it's a long time ago I knew this was the career for me, and I'm very glad that I've been involved with it. And I've had quite a lot of experience um, in a special library in uh, the Middle Belt in Nigeria, in a public library here in Ghana uh, at British Council, where I've met some people who may be here. Um, and then most recently, I'm here at Ashesi University in an academic library. So I've had quite a lot of experience here in West Africa, in Nigeria, in Ghana, and seen all the changes that have gone on. And, um, you know, I would very much like to say that, you know, I've learned from all the different people who are here. Um, I can say thank you very much to Dr. Asamwa Hassan, with whom I've worked through. I knew her at KNUST, um, but I've also worked with her in CALIC, in the Consortium of Academic and Research Libraries, 
and other people, um, other members of the panel, maybe I haven't interacted personally with them, but I know who they are and I know that I can always call on them for help and assistance. And I think that's one of the important things about mentoring. It's two ways. It's being able to ask for help and also for somebody to give it to you. So I think that's kind of my first few thoughts uh, to start us off. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mrs. Shachi, for your insights. And we'll now move on to um, Professor Mambo Tata. Thank you. Okay. From Mambo Tata, can you please um, share with us all the challenging moments in your career as a woman and as a mother in your librarian team? Um, uh, thank you very much. Um, I, I, I was tempted to start like uh, my sister Nina did about how she got into librarianship before I talk about the challenges that I've, that, that I've, that I've uh, encountered as a woman and as a, li as a librarian. I, I must say I became a librarian by choice. It's the only job I've ever done and I have no regrets and I love where the journey has taken me. Um, and I've met many wonderful people, many strong women along the way who have helped to shape my character. And I'm glad that I've, I've met them. Uh, none of it was by, uh, none of it was by my own design, but it was a confluence, confluence that uh, 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 the good Lord brought into my life. But I have been grateful that I've had a mentor all of my life that I could call on. Even now, I could call on her when I need to talk to somebody uh, intimately and, and, and they, can, they can speak to me. Um, and one of, one of, I've had many challenges, <laughs> but I think that um, one of the challenges that as many younger women face is balancing the career and their work life and their family on one hand. And, and all those, both those are very important in your, in your life as a woman, how you hold your work and how you carry, uh, uh, carry your family along. And quite often I, I see um, people having difficulty with making a choice, but I, I make this choice that uh, my job is important to me but my family is number one to me. So if I must tidy up and take leave and be with my family, I can always pick up my career, but I can't always buy another family. And so it's, it's very important to have a balanced work life. And so when I've given time to my family and put them first, I then take my family along with me to help me build my character, I mean, build my work. I, I, I can share you with you stories of taking my little children to work on Saturdays and Sunday in order to make up because I've gone, taken time to go to sports during the week. So it's very important to have a balanced, a, child, a balanced work life. Attend to your family, but take your family along to support you in your career so that one is not stressed and challenged by being a woman and professional woman. I'll stop there. Thanks very much, Dr. Papapata. And we are aware that today is your birthday in the panel of us. We like all to have the chance to help you miss this And um, it's for you to also recognize this birthday and to send this to you on the birthday as a birthday. Wish you a happy birthday and hope your day is filled with lots of love and laughter. May all your birthday wishes come true. Okay, uh, I think this is uh, Dr. Helena Asamoa speaking. Uh, yes, Doc, uh, in a short while, please. I think we're just trying to celebrate uh, the birthday of Madam, and then we would then would have proceeded with the program. We just thought it was right to acknowledge her and to celebrate her as well. Then we would then come in. So a very happy birthday to you, Madam. We appreciate you. We want to acknowledge you and uh, we pray for more blessings and a long life upon your, 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 your life as well so that you can 
have more time to share and to mentor the younger ones. A very happy birthday to you. I see lots of messages pouring in from uh, uh, distinguished participants. One from Kali Alaman Alamagani. Happy birthday to you, Dr. Helena. Uh, this is also someone from uh, Namibia also saying happy birthday to you. I think the messages are dropping in and we really appreciate you. Like I said, we are praying. Happy birthday to a phenomenal woman. God's blessings always. This is from Lola Murphy. Happy birthday, Dr. Hassan from Kapesi Tempon. We acknowledge you. Happy birthday to you. Okay. I think at this point we can proceed with the discussions. We thank you for, for your patience and for your time as well. And the next person to speak to the issues is uh, Dr. Asamoah. And we want you to share with us uh, I think so far from the discussions, it has come out that there are indeed some challenges. But uh, we know that this, in as much as there are some challenges, there are also some really high points where we are happy, you know, our happiest moments, or there were times we we're really proud that we found ourselves in this field and that we are women and we've been able to come this far by really being in the decision making room. We want you to share with us some of those happy moments, some of the times where you actually felt, uh, you, you know, convinced that you found yourself in the right profession. And as a woman who is excelling at the topmost level in the institution, what will be some of those happy moments that you can share with us, the younger ones? Thank you very much, uh, my dear, for that. And I wish to thank everybody for the birthday wishes. Sometimes I wonder, I said, why should my birthday be the same day as the International Women's Year? It looks like, you know, but I thank God for everything and I thank everybody for your kind words. Ah, my happiest moments. I would just uh, want to say that if I were to ring, can it go and come back? I would want to be a librarian because as I sit I am really fulfilled in the profession that I find myself in. And uh, day in, day out, I feel that uh, it was the right thing for me to do. And like um, when I finished my A-levels and uh, I was asked to go and do philosophy, linguistics and some another course at Legon, I said, no, I wasn't good. I wanted to be a lawyer. And uh, so I said, let me do one year working at the KNUST library so that uh, I'll fill in and then go the following year. And I was there and then perchance somebody came from Ahmedou Bello University, Nigeria for university games and said, we do library science. Are you not interested? And that's how I got into the profession. And I've never looked back. And with this, what I want to say, the whatever profession you find yourself in, Make the best out of it. There is no profession which is better than the other. It is how you make it. You can be a librarian and go all the world over. You can be a librarian and perform as good or as well as a medical doctor would. So please, those of you who found yourselves into the profession by chance, please take hold of yourself and ensure that you make good use of what you are and you go places. That is all, because I'm not going to tell you stories here, but those who know me know how I have been in the library profession that in most countries people look down upon. And it is this same library profession which has taken me to everywhere, nook and corner. And um, I'm happy to be here. And uh, my longtime friend, Butley, glad to see you again on the screen. Um, and Nina, Good to see you. Uh, Chinwe is gone. Looks like all of them have had relationships with all my colleagues on the panel today. Very close relationships. Um, the time that I was, <laughs> my happiest moment. Oh, there are many. Let me see one. That might uh, and be a little tricky, but let me just say that. That was the day when the vice chancellor, my vice chancellor at the University of uh, Science and Professor Eim, then 
you know, internet had just come into the universities and the library was the nodal point. And most of these faculty were not really uh, knowledgeable about that. So the vice chancellor at a meeting, actually it's heads of department, heads, I mean, heads of the units, met and he said, oh, you are talking about internet and all this. A uh, librarian, the thing sits in your library. Can you tell us what it means? And I normally, I'm, I mean, I'm a BBC, but I make sure that uh, I talk to the IT people to be abreast with what is happening. So I started rattling off. This is what you can do. That is what you can do. That is what. And these, uh, my colleagues, fortunately, unfortunately, I was the only female at that meeting. And these, my colleagues are technical people. So when I started, papa, 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 I started talking about all these things. The vice chancellor could have said, now you all hear me from now on. Every IT committee on this campus, the university librarian has to be on it. I mean, you can imagine. <laughs> and I was very happy. And close related to that was a day when the same vice chancellor needed some urgent information. And we couldn't find them in the books. We needed to go online. And I said, Prof, we can get it for you. You said, are you sure? I mean, before the day ended, we had gone online, contacted some of the libraries that had that in stock. And through email, we were able to deliver that. And um, from there, the status of the library was raised on the campus. It was raised. And from there, people were not joking with libraries. They knew that uh, uh, when you get there, you get what you want. And I was really, really happy you know, about that. Because at the end of the day, what are we doing? We are here as librarians to serve, provide the information needs of our communities. And once I'm able to do that, I'm very happy. So that is about my happiest moment as a librarian. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I think that you've shared some really good points with us. Uh, I, I read about, or I learned from your response about how we should all try and be innovative and be knowledgeable and not limit ourselves to specific scope. Because if you yourself are not opening yourself up to, to, to be knowledgeable about what was happening in the IT space, when they asked that, that question, you couldn't have responded. You also highlighted uh, the need for prompt response. You said that VC gave you a task and before the end of the day, it was done. So which means we really have to be prompt in, in our interventions and, and in our responses. When you are giving tasks, you are expected to really, um, you know, uh, deliver immediately and prove your worth. You also said through some of these things that you, you did, you helped raise the status of the library in your university. Some people, some of us might be thinking we are not recognized, we are in a corner, but you actually have the power as the librarian, as a young person, to change that image that maybe the institution has of the library. So we thank you very much for sharing your experience with us, man. And just to let you know, there's a huge citation that I have here. Uh, I don't know, I heard we might be losing you soon. So uh, even though this should have come at the end, maybe I have to go through it now. Is it, is it, can we see it? I'm not sure my technical, uh, my technical team members are trying to work on it so that you can see it properly. But I would read it, and this is from the Accra Technical University, uh, together with the Association of African Universities. So I would read it. It's to Dr. Helena Isamoa Hassan. Your enormous contribution, okay, so that's what it is. I'll read uh, what's captured on with your face like that. Is it okay? Okay, I think it can be seen now. So I'll read it from here. Your enormous contribution to the higher education community and librarianship is impeccably overwhelming as an outstanding woman, mentor, coach, and a guide to many young hearts in Africa and across the globe. As a leader and a librarian, you have contributed to knowledge, knowledge in all aspects of librarianship, having up to 96 publications to your credit. That is huge. Your tremendous impact in the, in the Ghana Library Association, Cali, Afia, UNESCO, and Afia has nursed and cultivated responsible and upright personalities, as well as supportive individuals 
within the library management terrain. Your perseverance is evident in your impartial support for all, irrespective of their backgrounds. Your energy, time, attention, and meticulous care towards holistic nurturing of young professionals around you are a unique hallmark. There are numerous women, yet only a few are identified as women of value and of substance. We salute you on this special day and honor your accomplishments. Most cherished woman. And this is a citation in honor of Dr. Elena Samoana San from Accra Technical University and the Association of African Universities. So this is to you, Ma. We'll arrange and uh, send it over. We really appreciate you. Thank you very much. I'm so humbled. And uh, all I can say is that God bless you. Thank you. God bless you too. And a happy International Women's Day, Day to you. Thank you so much. Okay. Is it on your family? Okay. Which means you are here for some time. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, we can continue the discussion. Uh, maybe I'll call my colleague. And Nana, to pick it up from you. Over to you, Nana. So um, across all sectors, individuals retire with so much money to gain in, uh, in their line of ways without a clear plan on how to share this emerging or entering into such things. What are some of the... Okay, so this is directed to um, Mrs. Tachu. What are some of the um, plans you have in mind on how to disseminate or share the immense experience and knowledge you've gathered across your journey as a librarian with young people in the field and individuals interested in venturing into the librarian and reach. All right. Um, okay, how do I share with other people? Um, well, um, I guess one of the things I would say, and I, I hope you can hear me, is um, it's basically you can't stay in your little office or your little hole or whatever it is, wherever you are, um, and just expect that somebody is going to know who you are and what you do. You have to kind of put yourself out in the world. Um, and that world can be different sizes and different proportions. I mean, you you need to get on with your students if you're working on, with an academic institution. You need to get on with your faculty, with your staff. So you, you volunteer. You do things for the community. Um, in another way, you do things for other librarians, whether you do, like for... For me, I've done it through Ghana Library Association in small ways, uh, through the Consortium of Academic and Research Libraries, um, which is one of the big activities that I'm involved with. And I hope that that way um, I can talk to people who are younger, uh, some who are older, get advice, perhaps give advice. Um, talk to them about what they want to do and what we can do in order to advance ourselves and our profession. And I think that um, Dr. Helena said something really, really important, and it's about adopting, you know, try to be innovative. Don't be scared of IT. You know, um, I think Librarians know a lot more about IT than probably some people think that they do. Um, and that's really, really, really important in these things. Um, you know, when you see the word AI or chat GPT, don't be scared and run away. Um, try and learn something about it. Um, don't don't say no 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 it's it's terrible we we don't like it you know try and see how you can use it in a more positive way um how it can help you as an individual how it can help your communities in the wider sense of the world so i think it's kind of you know join other groups and you you can profit by them um and it doesn't all have to be face to face. Uh, I think the pandemic taught us that. Um, but 
you know, there were organizations like AAU, like IFLA, like AFLIA, like Eiffel, and a lot of others that we've learned from because we've met people online and we've broadened our own horizons. Yeah, those are some of my small ideas. Thank you. Thank you for your inputs. Um, well, so from what you just said, I think that that's um, in all, even across all sectors, there has been a need for innovation to stay relevant. So innovation as young people and scientists do. And um, now, okay, um, if um, Prof. Malvo Tatsai then would like to also make his submission to this, um, to this question. So some of the um, plans she has as she uh, embarks on retirement. And and so I I will uh, before I talk about retirement I want I don't want to lose the opportunity to join in the community in wishing uh, Helena a wonderful day and a wonderful year ahead uh, as we celebrate women we celebrate you happy birthday um, uh, and and as she said that this profession has taken her to 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 to, to many 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 corners. And sometimes celebrating her birthday in many corners of the world. I wish you well going forward, Helen. And so the question, I, I didn't quite hear what the panel, the, the panel coordinator said I should speak about. So um, some of the plans she had for retirement as a librarian, sharing the experiences she had at Upwork this day with the young people in the industry. All right, all right. Uh, one of the things I was going to say earlier is that when you start your career, you must also be, be de deliberate about where you want to go with your career. Like a good librarian, plan for it. What do I want to do in 10 years? What do I want to do in 20 years? What do I want to do in 30 years? I, for example, wanted to have a, had a date when I should be done with my PhD. So set that date. At, at what point in your career do you want to be university librarian? At what point in my career do you want to be a professor? At what point in your career do you want to be this? Because it helps you to plan towards it. And when you don't reach those milestones, you can correct yourself and work towards them. The same way with retirement. We have to plan for our retirement. I, I use the term that we retire as in getting new tires. We retire, we get new tires, because when we retire from this one profession, we go on to another. So we got new tires for the next profession. There's no such thing as retirement and sitting on the stoop and drinking coffee all day. There's a lot of things to be done there and we'll keep going until we run out of energy. And so when we leave our institutions, and, and I think it's very important for us to, to prepare for leaving our institutions. Because if we don't prepare for them, if we don't prepare for retirement, you keep holding on to a chair when the age strikes. But you've got to go out of there celebrating that I've done what I could while I was here. It's time to get onto new tires and retire onto a new profession. So as much as you plan for your retirement, please, I mean, for your, for your career, please, also plan for your retirement. I, I often see uh, colleagues uh, struggling and asking for one year extension and one year extension and one year extension. Sometimes it is because they're not yet done with what they are doing, but sometimes it is because they haven't made a plan of what to do when they leave. So please plan, plan for it, plan your career and plan what you'll do when you are asked to retire. Yeah, thanks. Thank you very much. I think uh, I have personally written down retire to get new tires. And I think this is very good. It's coming in at a very good time. I mean, when we are still <laughs> at the start of our career, so that we can plan yes. ahead of time. I think I really appreciate you for that. Um, just to move on with the discussion, if we have a Dr. Helena Samoa Hassan with us, uh, we would want you to tell us a little bit about some soft skills that we should have, which we should really cherish and we should polish it and help us move up. Because ultimately, we all want to move up the ladder 
and get to where some of you have reached and, and even exceed. I mean, as young people who are just starting our career, what are some of those key qualities? What are some of those soft skills that we should have? Because we know to move up, sometimes it's not only about, uh, you know, your qualifications or it's not only about how intelligent you are, but there are a lot of um, some soft skills that we need to have, you know? So we'd want to hear a little bit around that from, from you. Thank you, Mom. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, soft skills, really? Okay. Um, the key thing for, for you, when you want to get up there, you need to work hard. Work hard. I'll keep saying it. Just two days ago, I was speaking somewhere and I was telling them that hard work, hard work pays. And once you are working, just have your mind on that I'm working hard to make sure that the system works. Don't for, don't ever have it at the back of your mind that what are my rewards? Yes, you are being paid a salary, but sometimes some people still want additional rewards. No, if you work hard and you even go the extra mile and nobody appreciates it, please forget about it. It will come back to you one day. Your hard work will come back to you. So that is the first thing. And also integrity, integrity. Um, it's rather unfortunate that uh, in recent times, people don't really guard their integrity. They think that, uh, let me do it anyhow, and so what? Uh, this is what is happening, let me do it. Hey, as a person and as a human being, you need to be known by something that, oh, this person, that even when things are being discussed somewhere, you are not there. Let it be said that, no, this person can never do that. And that is what makes you. Integrity, it defines who you are. And I believe that there is nobody, when I hear people saying that, what, I've come here, do I care about my integrity? No, you are a human being. You must leave a kind of a mark. And the mark should not be a negative one. One that some people mention your name, even when you are dead and the things that they will say. So integrity is part of it. And close related to integrity is honesty and truth, truthfulness. Um, little, little lies. Like you get somebody, the person does not come to work and you ask, and so my child was sick. It's a lie. And I always say that when you say your child was sick, your child will surely be sick one day. And what excuse are you coming to give? You know, so we must make sure that we do, we try and do the right things. Nobody is perfect. But when they are, we have a, a proverb, if I say it, they said, when you are lying, give a lie that there is a window by it. I'm translating it from my language. That when you are lying, lie that you have a window you can jump through when, the, when you really hit and people are getting at you. You know, you can, you can say some things and then be truthful about it. So those are the things. To me, I always talk about... Um, working hard because uh, 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 whatever I am today by the grace of God is through hard work. That wherever I find myself, I make sure that I put hard work first. So you sit back and then things come, like when I am on the international front, I make sure that I do hard work. So once you do that, then I come back home. When anybody contacts somebody on the international front, I'm going to Ghana. I need a librarian that I want to do a certain job. They will say, oh, go to Helena. How? Because I made sure that I made a mark. I worked hard there and made sure that my integrity was there. So once they give it, give the name, they know that they will have hard work. And thank God, once they come in, they go back with good results. You must be known by something. So do your hard work, have integrity, be honest and be truthful. Those are the things that I know are very important. And whatever be it, you try, if there is any new thing which comes into the profession, please try and go up to it. Don't say, I have just learned how to use uh, the three by six cards. Now you are telling me to go to the computer. And now I used to learn uh, Microsoft this. Now they have upgraded. You are worrying me. No, you need it. You need it so that at the end of the day, you are all around and you are current and you are able to serve the needy and the communities that you have decided to serve in. Thank you.
much, ma'am. I think uh, these are very good. Uh, for uh, uh, guests who have connected, please feel free to use the chat box to drop some questions. There will be a session for Q&A, where you also get to engage uh, a high-level panelist. I think that is very important because you may have a lot of questions that we wouldn't have asked. But whilst we wait for that session, please feel free to drop some questions in, in the chat box and we'll pick it up and, and present it. Thank you so much. Uh, my next question may be uh, Dr. Tata can come in. Uh, these days, universities are challenged, you know, uh, financially because uh, funds are dwindling, governments are cutting funds, and uh, various units are expected to somehow also bring in some funding to the institutions. How can we as librarians really get ourselves involved in some kind of consortiums where we are also uh, seeking to submit proposals to bring in funding, but sometimes it might really not typically be part of our training. How can we contribute to ensuring that our libraries, because I mean, for your e-library, you need uh, money to uh, sort of uh, do annual subscriptions to ensure the security and to sign on to so many other things. So really funding is very key. Or is it even our job, you know, as librarians to, uh, be involved in this fundraising for the institution in any way. And if it is our job, how do we practically go about it? Since for most of us, or for some of us, it might not have been part of our training. What can we do to bring in funding to support our institutions, if it's uh, our job in any way? I think uh, we would want to hear a little bit about finances, because money is very important in our, our, our current uh, jurisdiction. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I think this is a, a question up my alley because I strongly believe that fundraising is our job as librarians um, and that we shouldn't... Uh, let, me context, we sh let me contextualize by saying that I, I believe that we should first of all have ideas of what we want to do and then we can go and find the money. If our ideas, the ideas depend on whether we have money, we will never get anything done. Dr. Helena might mention this, but when Aflia started, we didn't have a penny. But it was ideas of a vast group of African librarians who said this is important for the continent, we'll get it started. The idea attracts funding. Set yourself as a person of integrity. So that when you go out to ask for money from people, they will not say, this one you can't trust with money. So even when you have got two cents to spend on a project, be honest, be dependable, use and be accountable with that money, with the two cents. Because next time there is $10 to give, people will give you the $10. So it is our responsibility to fund our work because it is our responsibility to fund our successes. If you sit and you wait for money to come in order for you to do a project, you will wait forever because it will not come from the budget. You have to go out and find the money. Network. When you meet people uh, at, at a conference, don't, don't hide and be that poor librarian from Africa. Carry your business cards. Give them to people. Speak and shake their hands clearly. Say, yes, I am so-and-so from such and such, and we are interested in working on this project. And, and make people know out there that you have ideas, your university has ideas, your institution has ideas. You want to go further. And that will attract resources to you. And then when you got the resources, please be accountable. It's not the time to go and pay all your debts. It's public money. Account for it. Write reports. Be honest, as has already been mentioned by Helena. Your, your integrity will attract other resources for you. But absence of it will shred your opportunity to even make any any, any money. I spent several years in fundraising 
And and the question, the point that is that I learned, one of the things I learned was the decision about whether to fund you does not depend on your proposal. It depends on the what people say about you, not at the table. So yes, it is our job. We need to fund our activities and fund our resources. After all, if we don't do that, our libraries will not get a budget. And I don't know about your country, but the same people who don't find you will say, why go to the library? It's full of old books. And if you don't want that sort of reputation for your library, find resources to turn it around. Yeah, thank you. But let me also add that there's actually quite a lot of resources out there online for free on how to write, write proposal, how to write strategic plans, how to uh, position your library for advantage. Use them, read them, read them at night instead of watching soccer, read them in, 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 the, in, the, in, the, in the evening, equip yourself to be uh, one that gets resources for your organization. It's not going to be easy, but it's possible. Thank you very much. These are really good. And I was taking notes throughout during your presentation. I think the issue of funding, it's a, a very important one and one for which I think we should spend quite some time discussing. And so for that reason, we would like to invite uh, Ms. Nina Chachu to also share her thoughts uh, regarding how practically, I mean, uh, as young people, we find ourselves in this space uh, with a lot of challenges. Uh, how can we really attract funding to our institution and make our, our libraries also very relevant in the institution? You know, even in our African homes, uh, when you go home, you could be three brothers or sisters. Maybe the last one is a rich person and they would wait for the last one to be there before some key topics are discussed. Why? Because whatever issue is at hand relates to money. So the person who brings in the money has a voice or a say. Uh, sort of, if, if I can put it that way. How can we ensure that we are also given a space at the table where it matters most because we are seen to be relevant and because we are attracting funding to our institution? Or if you have personal experiences to share as well, that would also be good. I believe Mrs. Nina can touch on this topic for us. Thank you very much. Okay. And uh, we're saying earlier that the issue of funding is very important and one for which we think we should spend quite some time discussing and, you know, deliberating. Um, and I was saying that even in our African homes, uh, there could be three siblings or five of you, you know, as being children of the house. And maybe the last one is the one who has the money. And if there's an issue for which they have called a meeting, they still would wait for the person who has the money to come. It, it's not fair, but I mean, sometimes we find ourselves in that situation or it's really the reality. They would wait for the last one who has the money to be part of the meeting before we start. Why? Because whatever issue it is they need to discuss relates to money. As you mean, there's a funeral to be organized. They need funding for that. There's a wedding, there's a program. They need money to do, do that. Or they are building a family house they need money to do that. So they would wait for the last one who ordinarily they shouldn't be bothered whether he or she is there. But because he or she is the one with the money, they would wait for the, the last child to be there. Mainly just pointing to the fact that uh, in our society, typically as we find ourselves and in our institutions, the units and the departments that seem to be bringing in the money because the institution needs funding to run. So the units or the sections that seem to be bringing in money are prioritized and are giving some sort of, um, uh, you know, some level of respect, if I can just put it that way. So for that reason, I wanted us to still discuss the issue of funding. And I was asking uh, Madam Nina to share with us her thoughts on how we can, uh, uh, we can also excel in this, in this space. What practically can we do to attract funding to our libraries and to our institutions. And I also said she has some personal experience to share that would also be great. But typically she can uh, walk us through what we can do practically. So I find myself that the librarian of uh, Lesotho University or University of Ghana or AT, what should I do to uh, you know, be proactive and to attract funding to the library and also to the institution? I think one of the, I think one of the things is obviously 
demonstrating that whatever you do provides value for money. Um, and um, I think um, some of that is educating users, educating faculty, educating um, you know, the powers that be within your institution. Um, you know, to show that the service that you provide is is part of is one that will help advance the institution. So um, if it makes your reputation better than um, than it was, then I think that is a plus point in whatever your uh, however you're advocating for more funding. Um, it's kind of making sure that you're one step ahead, being articulate at times, um, you know, uh, within meetings, uh, you know, when you're negotiating with your finance people and so on. In some ways, I will admit that um I have been very lucky in the institution where I am currently working that um, there is definitely the feeling that, okay, the library does show its value, that there are students here, that faculty use it, that we are always watching what we're doing. Uh, we're showing that we have services that are part of our community. And I think that those are some of the things. Um, I mean, Boucher and uh, Dr. Helena, you know, have all given the more practical ways of, of doing things. It's definitely being out there. Because if you're not known, if you demonst don't demonstrate what you do, then you won't get anywhere. Um, so I think there are, you know, each type of personality, uh, each type of, each individual has something else that, that they can offer. And sometimes that's hard if you're a female, because maybe some women don't feel that they, they are so outgoing or that they're so pushy or, you know, they don't want to be called bossy or whatever it is. But those are the ones who will succeed. Um, and I think, you know, some of us thank those who have achieved for us. And for some of us, we we follow what their examples are. We, we make sure that we try and um, improve ourselves. And we try to make a name for ourselves within our institution. Um, and I think that However much you do that, you do, that does help you. Um, and, you know, you can easily see, I mean, Florence, Dr. Plucky, you know, at ATU is fairly new at ATU, but she's done a really wonderful job of, you know, promoting her university, of promoting her library. And I think that these are the kind of examples that we have to follow. And, and, you know, some of us are very grateful and we hope that, um, you know, we're sure that there will be others who will do just as well, who will do things differently and will bring a great future to all of us. I think those are just some of my thoughts right now. Hello. Thank you very much, Madam. Uh, I think before uh, you, you, you leave, I mean, I know you are here with us, but since you are spoken, uh, just to let you know, we have another special citation in Tana of the six Nina Chachu. Today is International Women's Day, and therefore we are actually taking uh, advantage of the day to celebrate the mentors, to celebrate the women who have done so much for uh, the library space, the library space in Ghana, and then in Africa, you know, at a, a, a continental level. So I do have this special citation in Anna of you, and I'll read it. It's also being presented by the Aquatic Technical University 
in collaboration with the Association of African Universities. And I read it as follows. You have been an outstanding woman, a mentor, a coach, and an authentic role model to many young hearts in Africa and across the globe. As an academic librarian with over 40 years worth of experience in library management in Ghana and Nigeria, you've invested quality time to educate, to guide, and mentor your staff, subordinates, students, and associates. Your tremendous impact in the Ghana Library Association and Cali has led and cultivated responsible and upright personalities, as well as supportive individuals within library management terrain. Your perseverance is evident in your impartial support for all, irrespective of the backgrounds. Your energy, time, attention, and meticulous care towards holistic nurturing of the young professionals around you are a unique hallmark. To the rudderless lost at sea, you showed yourself to be a reliable ruder. There are numerous women, yet only a few are identified as women of valor and of substance. We salute you on this special day and honor your accomplishments. Most cherished woman, Madame Nina Chachu. So this is from all of us. We want to appreciate you and a happy International Women's Day to you. Well, what can I say? Thank you very much. Um, I feel uh, I, 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 I'm feeling like I'm blushing. Uh, which you could see a bit more easily, you know, with uh, with lighter skin, and um, you know, I'm I'm very grateful for the very kind words um, that have described me. Um, I only wish I could do more, and I really do appreciate all the love and care that everybody has shown to me. So, thank you. Thank you very much. We appreciate you. It's been a lot of years in this space, and you give us role models to look up to, and for that we are indeed uh, very grateful. Uh, at this point, we would want to continue, and I would like to hand over to my co-moderator to take us through the Q&A session. I think we are almost coming to the end of the discussion. Uh, so at this point, we want to give participants a voice to also ask their question. I understand one question came through the chat, so now I will start with that. But those who have questions, please raise your hand and we'll give an opportunity for you to engage with our distinguished speakers. Thank you very much. Over to you, Nana. Thank you, Thank you. Um, there's a question from Michael, and I think it's directed to um, Dr. Mbabu Tata. On your submission, that there are lots of platforms um, yeah, available to individuals in the library space to um, access for proposal writing and then grant writing. And Michael wants to know if um, you can share some templates or even links of grant proposals to help them write grants for their libraries. I, I hope I heard the question well, okay. that so, they're uh, asking for to be, to be pointed towards where they can find funding for libraries. Yes. Oh, okay. It, it depends on what they want to fund for libraries. If you want to fund open access, you go to spaces where they fund open access. If you want to fund OERs, you go to spaces where they fund libraries. You will not find a space where they just fund libraries. You, you need to be clear about the idea that you want funded, and then you go to that space. If you want to find fund uh, research, you go to Welcome Trust. But also make yourself avail participate in many um, online spaces. Participate in the AFLIA space, participate in the IFLA space, sometimes uh, participate in the IFL space, sometimes uh, call for proposals are sent to those spaces. And if you have ideas that need to be funded, you will find opportunity there. But be very clear about what it is that you want to fund. And then you'll find a space where to go and ask for that. You can also generally do a search online, funding libraries, and, and see what that harvests, whether it points you to, 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 towards that. 
Uh, if you want to go to an organization that works on planning, there's an organization called Library Strategies. Your consortia also probably runs workshops on fundraising or on writing proposals. Sometimes li your library associations may run, write I mean, run workshops on writing proposals. So look for opportunities and align yourself with the opportunity. I hope I answered the question well. Yes, Doc, I think you did. And thank you very much, Bess. And we are so we are still waiting on um, questions from the participants. You can just raise your hands and we'll come to you. Um, as we wait, there's a submission, it's not a question, from David, who supports um Dr. Mbabo's um point that we need to we need to know as librarians, what we need to know as librarians is that we have to think critically. Let's find information resources. Currently, institutions and organizations are advocating for open knowledge, that is open education, educational resources. And this is something librarians need to involve themselves in join the movement. So that is from David, submission from David. May, may I comment on that? May I comment on that? Yes, please, you can. Uh, thank you very much. I, I think uh, both uh, Nina and, and Helena have touched on the value of um, uh, aligning yourself with innovation and stepping forward. Not, not only must we uh, work in the area of, OE, of OERs, we must embrace it and lead it. Not only must we work only in the area of, of open, uh, open access, we must embrace it and lead it because it is in embracing and learning those opportunities that we can actually be leaders in the university. And then we'll be able to dictate or even uh, direct which way the university should go. And that itself would attract resources. Yes. So please not only get involved with OERs, embrace it, make your hands dirty with it and grow with it and lead it because aligned to that is resources as well and opportunity to set pace within your university. Thank you very much, Doc. We are still waiting for more questions from the participants. You can either raise your hand or you can also type your question. Um, I think, uh, can I make a contribution? Yes. Um, because we are all learning and from each other. Um, for when I look at things, it uh, looks like um, in recent times, uh, most of us, we are not very particular in the things we do. For instance, when you are submitting an article to a journal for publication, um, when these articles come to some of us who have to review, you find that there are a lot of mistakes, which means that they were hurriedly put together. We didn't pay attention to detail. Um, your spellings, and then um, construction. So when these articles come to us, I mean, most often they are rejected. And then uh, people feel discouraged to go back and then publish again. I think uh, we, we need to pay a lot of attention to detail. And as librarians, that is part of our work, attention to detail. So that when somebody comes looking for a material, in the library, you know that, oh yes, I have seen it somewhere. I've kept the idea about it, the memory of it somewhere. So please, um, if you want to really go up in your career and you need to publish, because most of us need to publish to go up in the career, it's important that we pay attention to details and then really write very good articles. Make sure that you look through carefully to ensure that uh, all the T's and the dots are in place. And that will help people to really also move up when they have to review. You may have very good points, but then the presentation can be a problem and that may see your article not being published. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Asamwaka. We are still waiting for more questions from our participants. Maybe whilst we wait, uh, as we know, today is a special day. 
and uh, as part of organizing this session, mentorship session to share a deep wealth of knowledge, you know, from uh, distinguished academics who have excelled, from our distinguished librarians who are really at the top level. We also want to recognize all their contribution to this space. And for that reason, I already earlier read two citations. There are two more, and uh, the technical team are trying to pull it up. These are electronic versions, uh, obviously because uh, Dr. Mbabo Tata is in Lesetho, and then uh, Prof. Chinwe is also in Nigeria. So we'll find a way to let them get this, but uh, we have e-versions of this. So I will read this, uh, the message, also uh, from Accra Technical University and then the Association of African University. Uh, it's coming up shortly, but I'll read it because I have also opened it on my laptop. So the first one is to Dr. Mbabu Tata, and it says, your charm, modesty, and soft-spoken personality has elevated and created a formidable version of yourself as a woman, as a mentor, and as an authentic role model to many young hearts in Africa and beyond. Leading with a strong vision, you initiated a, digital, a digitalization project which tried at an economically challenging period. As a librarian, your impact in championing a digital library structure where systems uh, in libraries are accessed and digital spaces is an awesome reputation. Your strong conviction towards a solid open access terrain to enhance data and research accessibility is amazing and commendable. Your energy, time, attention, and meticulous care towards holistic nurturing of the young professionals around you are a unique hallmark. We salute you on this special day and honor your accomplishments. Most cherished woman, Dr. Mbabu Zata. So we appreciate you, Doc. We are so happy to have you, and we are happy to for you to share your extensive knowledge uh, with us. We appreciate you on this day. A very happy International Women's Day to you. Uh, the next one is to Prof. Chinwei Anonubi, who I know is not connected because she was traveling, but we'll still read her citation. And it's a citation in her honor being given by the Accra Technical University and the Association of African Universities. And it goes as follows. You are a shining figure of excellence in higher education management and pioneering. Your passion, knowledge management has propelled you in defining the eight point agenda for transformation of National Library of Nigeria on the assumption of duty. Your tremendous impact in altering over 100 articles and uh, several conference presentations is incredible and inspiring. Your passion to train and mentor young professionals interested in ICT and education is a great motivation to the future generation. Your energy, time, attention, and meticulous care towards holistic nurturing of young professionals around you are a unique former. We salute you on this special day and honor your accomplishments. Most cherished woman, Professor Chingu and Nubi. A very happy International Women's Day to all of our distinguished uh, panelists. I believe we can end the panel discussion at this time. Uh, we had a one and a half hour. We've already done one and a half hour. So I think we can uh, proceed to take the closing remarks from the Pro Vice Chancellor of Accra Technical University, Prof. Amevi Akakobi. Uh, if Prof. is connected, we we'll be privileged to have you give us the closing remarks. Yes, I'm still connected. Thank you very much. Over to you, Prof. <laughs> yes, good uh, afternoon to everyone. And uh, thank you very much for providing us a lot of experience today. I am happy to be part of this event. And I've listened carefully to our speakers. And I think they have a lot to, 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 to tell us. And I believe that the young professional have also listened to quite a lot of things that will support us in our career. Uh, but let me put a small summary to a few things that I think can help us in the future. 
And let me call them lessons, perhaps, that we learn from this event. I think from one of the speakers, they emphasize really the, the role of women, you know, in society and also in the houses and combining and balancing this role with the library and other or professional work is quite important. We were called, there was a call for us to be more proactive, innovative and forward planner. You know, planning was really, really emphasized in this seminar because we need to plan our career to have a target where we want to reach and even plan our retirement when we want to exit and exit peacefully. Yes, we also emphasize in this seminar that there's no better profession. Just make your own better. Whatever work you are doing, don't underrate it. It's about how you handle it that it becomes big. So let's learn to make our own better. Let's also learn to celebrate our victories when actually victories have come. Because some of the victories I share with Dr. Elena today is her successes in providing, you know, information to the community, which is the core of the main functions of the library in the university. And I think that really we associate ourselves to celebrate uh, these victories with you. And that's why we're also celebrating the victory of we organizing this today as part of activities of the ATU library. Yes, we also call to subject ourselves to learning opportunities and acquire good skills that will enhance our work. So whatever work you are doing, even beyond the library work, the, advice, the piece of advice we get from this seminar are also applicable to you. You need to acquire new skills. Things are changing every day. And so you don't, leave, you don't have to stay behind while technology is moving forward especially the infusion of IT in all skills. So you need to be learning all the time, lifelong learning experiences. We also have a few emphasis on volunteerism as a way of one person submitting himself to somebody who is higher so that he learns more skill, he learns more, you know, he acquires more knowledge and is more dependable and helpful to the society. You must learn to provide services selflessly without requesting cost or without requesting any other advantages. That is how we become dependable and reliable for people. And when we develop this, in addition to hard work, which was really emphasized, hard work as a skill, and then upholding a high integrity, then people tend to believe us strongly in our workplace and the openness avenues to become better. We can also add to this a bit of honesty and then truthfulness. And I believe that the list of advice goes on and on. But I will stop on this and, and say a big thank you for all the speakers. We've learned a lot from you. We'll continue picking this advice in our life. And I know it will shape the life of many who have listened to you today. Finally, permit me to associate myself to all the speakers to wish Dr. Elena a, a happy birthday today and also a happy International Women's Day for, to all. I thank you very much for associating yourself with Accra Technical University. I thank the University of Liberia, Dr. Plotty, for organizing this event. And I believe that the future is just great. Thank you very much. I appreciate you. I actually get excited when we have men participating in a typical International Women's Day event because uh, <laughs> women don't exist alone in society and we need to work together with uh, our male counterparts to actually move forward together. So we appreciate you both. And I think you have even done my work. You have made my work much easier. You've actually given a very good summary of all the discussions. We appreciate you and we thank you so much for staying throughout the, the session. We are indeed very grateful to you. At this point, we would like to just hear some few words from the woman behind the organization of this event, the powerful force who had actually been involved in uh, bringing together all these high-level speakers, getting the institution to really be involved and to lead the process, and getting all the key people in terms of uh, uh, us even having the pro vice chancellor here, marketing the event. I, I know she didn't do it alone. It was, uh, she did it with her team. We want to hear some nice words from Dr. Florence as well. 
Uh, Doc, I don't know if you are connected, but it's International Women's Day, and uh, we, we want to get to the first part. Okay, thank you very much. Yes, let me say a uh, happy International Women's Day to all our participants, and then to our able panelists, and especially to you, the moderators. We are very, very grateful. Without you, this program would not have been possible. And you always keep participating in any program that we put out. This means that you really cherish us. We thank you so much. And I'm not going to give the vote of thanks because somebody is there to give the vote of thanks. But then let me also recognize the, the presidents of Ghana Library Association in the person of uh, Madame Comfort Asare, and then the former president, uh, Mr. Agri, and all our international participants, and particularly our national participants as well. And then my wonderful ABLE team, the webinars committee members, also thank you all for the follow-up. And especially to you, Madam Felicia and Nana, and all the AAE team behind the scenes. We are really, really grateful. I'll hand over to you. We hope that any time that you call for any webinar series, any mentorship series, to keep patronizing it, to keep sharing knowledge together. Thank you very much. And for our Pro Vice Chancellor, Prof, you're always behind us. You are always supporting us. Thank you so much for everything. Thank you. Over to you, Madam Felicia. And uh, we also want to thank you very much. Uh, for leading this process in organizing the event. We appreciate you and a very happy International Women's Day to you as well. As you rightly said, you are not the one to uh, give the vote of thanks. So at this point, uh, I would like to invite Mrs. Salik and Duflo to give the vote of thanks for the session and then we'll close the right. So thank you very much and good afternoon all. Thank you is, a, is such a prayer that cannot be seen or touched. It must be felt by the heart. I feel honored and privileged to get the opportunity to give the vote of thanks on this special occasion. First of all, I would like to thank the almighty God for making this program a success. I am grateful to Prof. Amavi Akakpovi, the Pro Vice Chancellor of Accra Technical University, for giving the opening address. And I'm also very thankful to all our honorable panelists, Mrs. Nina Chachu, Dr. Asamwa Hassan, Prof. Mambo Tati, and Prof. Anu Nobi, who shared their valuable experience as knowledge professionals par excellence. To, to our able moderators and partners from Association of African University, we are most grateful for your support and your help. To all the local and international participants, we want to say thank you, thank you, thank you for joining the program. And we hope that you've been blessed by this program. And then we'll all use the program to enhance ourselves as knowledge professionals. To the organizers of this program, we want to say that thank you very much. You've done so well, and we are looking out for more of such programs. And we thank all our uh, dignitaries for joining the president of Ghana Library Association, the former president. We are grateful that you joined. Once again, Dr. Asamwa Hassan, happy birthday and happy. International Women's Day to all women. Thank you all. Thank you very much uh, for the vote of thanks. I think uh, after this, I might not have to uh, speak a lot, but I also want to add my voice to thank all the participants. I'm just looking through the list and I see people connected from Gambia, from Namibia, from South Africa, from Ghana, from Lesotho, from Nigeria, and it's, it's a continental event. We really want to appreciate all of you. I'm seeing University of Limpopo, the Federal University of uh, Otuoke in Nigeria. I mean, people are connected from all over. 
University of Oyo, also in Nigeria, and all of that. So we want to thank all of you for joining us for uh, one and almost uh, 40 minutes, uh, almost two hour session. Uh, we thank you, and we also thank uh, able panelists for this honor of sharing the knowledge with us. Uh, I think uh, our only request to Madam Florence would be for her to organize more of such events, to create such platforms for us. Uh, even if possible, at some point, we could also consider a physical session. So this is a, a, to a challenge to Madam Florence, but we trust her, and we know she has been the able woman uh, behind the organization of this event, and many more to come. Uh, and like she said, we hope that next time when there is a call, we would all be available to join and to participate. So we thank all of you. I think on that note, or I think Madam Florence wanted to react. That is fine. We want to end the session. I think we've done a little over 10 minutes or almost 20 minutes, which only means that we had really great conversations and key lessons. We didn't even want to end it. So we thank all of you and we hope to see you soon and when the next event is uh, organized. We appreciate you and a very happy International Women's Day to all of you from us here at the Association of African Universities and then from the Accra Technical University and specifically the library as well. Bye-bye from, from all of us. We thank you so much and we hope to see you soon. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.